All right. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank God for your presence this morning. I just muted everyone so that we could hear clearly. Grateful for this opportunity to come and to share one with another. Uh, Thank God for the ability to hear your voices, even when we can't see each other's faces. Um, It's just a joy to be able to join again with each other in this time of devotion and prayer. Uh, The book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 12, Jeremiah, that prophet Jeremiah, uh, chapter 12, I'll read verses 1 and 2 and then read verse 5. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I complain to you, yet I would plead my case before you. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why do all who are treacherous thrive? You plant them, and they take root. They grow and produce fruit. You are near in their mouth, far from their heart. Verse 5, if you have raced with men on foot, they have wearied you. How will you compete with horses? And if in a safe land you are so trusting, what will you do in the thicket of the Jordan. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, this book of Jeremiah is an autobiographical sketch of the life and times of the prophet Jeremiah and his experience with the people of Judah. The book begins with God calling Jeremiah before he was even born and appointing him to be a prophet to the nation. But the task that God gives Jeremiah seems to be one of a difficult nature. God calls Jeremiah to be a prophet at a very critical time in the life of Judah. He's called to be a mouthpiece of God to a people who really don't want to hear what God has to say. And the truth of the matter is that we too live during a time where people really don't want to hear what God has to say. In this era of name it and claim it, very few want to hear what God has to say. In this time of prosperity preaching, few want to hear what God has to say. In this time of games and gimmicks and getting over, few want to hear what God has to say. In this time of pulpit celebrities and social media preaching personalities. Few want to hear what God has to say. We'd rather be entertained than to be challenged by the word of God. We'd rather be popular than to be powerful. We'd rather be known for what we think than to be known for sharing what God says. And quite honestly, It really should be no surprise to us, as the Bible said, that days would come like this when people would not endure sound doctrine, but would go after their own lust and heap upon themselves teachers having itching ears and how they shall turn away their ears from the truth. The truth is that people just don't want to hear what thus saith the Lord. And yet, even though people don't want to hear what God has to say, God still needs some willing men and women to preach truth to power. God needs some modern-day prophets to speak out against the establishment, pointing out what is wrong in the world and properly critiquing the powers that be. God needs some bona fide leaders who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. And not only does God desire some true people of God who will hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, but the truth is we need them too. Why? Because we need to hear a word from the Lord. We, we need to hear from God as we deal with Russia and Ukraine. Israel and Hamas, Donald Trump, right-wing evangelicals and this election 
in November. We need to hear a word from God because just one word from the Lord will remove all doubts. In the midst of Judah's rebellion, in the midst of their backsliding, and in the midst of their disobedience, God tells Jeremiah, prophesy to the people. And God told Jeremiah that he was to go where he was sent And when he got there, God would give him exactly what he needed to say. God told him, don't be afraid of their faces, for he would deliver him. The Bible lets us know that even when Jeremiah wanted to quit, that God's word was in him like a burning fire shut up in his bones. He tried to keep it to himself, but he just couldn't do it. So Jeremiah goes to work. He's prophesying against the kings of Judah and their princes and her priests and all the people for their idolatry and their spiritual adultery. His primary ministry was focused around his hometown, and unfortunately, he was not received with open arms. The people of his hometown had sent warning to Jeremiah and told him not to prophesy in the name of the Lord. They even threatened to kill him if he continued to speak out on God's behalf. Sadly, we also discover that even his own father and brothers are plotting against him, and the Lord warns Jeremiah not to believe the nice things that they have to say. But Jeremiah, by the power of God, prophesied to the people of Judah anyway and tells them to repent from their idolatrous ways. Return, O backslider, and if you will, God is still able and willing to revive you. Jeremiah grieves for the people. He begins to cry out unto the Lord, for it seems that sickness has taken over the land. The minds of the people are warped, and Jeremiah is left crying out, is there any balm in Gilead? Is there any relief? Is there any way to soothe these wounds? Is there any comfort? And where is it coming from? Can I just pause for a moment? Because I hear what you're saying, Jeremiah. I, too, would like to know, where is our relief coming from? When, when, when will things turn around? When and where is our comfort coming? When will things get better? That that's where Jeremiah is and what he's experiencing when we get to this point in our text for consideration. Listen to him as he appeals to God. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I complain to you. Yet I plead my case before you. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why do all uh, who are treacherous thrive? You plant them and they take root. They grow and produce fruit. You're near in their mouth, far from their heart. Well, sisters and brothers, by chapter 12 of his life story, Jeremiah is discouraged. And I don't know about you, but I know a little bit about being discouraged. Jeremiah is complaining and pleading with the Lord. He has come down with a case of the whys. Why do the wicked prosper? Why are the treacherous thriving. And if we can be honest this morning, Jeremiah is not alone in feeling the way that he does. In fact, there may be somebody on the prayer line this morning that feels the same way. Lord, why are we still dealing with issue after issue and circumstance after circumstance? Did I hear right that there's yet another strand of COVID emerging? Did I hear right that there has been yet another shooting at a school? Did I hear right that there are still wealthy people out here dealing treacherously, thinking that they are above the law? Lord, why? Lord, how long is it going to last? Why does the way of the wicked people continue to prosper? Why are all those who deal in treachery at ease? Why is there still so much injustice? Why are so many still suffering and hurting? How long until we experience the change that Sam Cooke sang about 
It's been a long time coming. And when is this change supposed to come? And so, my brothers and sisters, we too have come down with a slight case of the wise. Yet, after Jeremiah shared his heart to God, listen to the response that God gives Jeremiah and the same response that he's sharing with you and me today. Verse 5 says, if you have raced with men on foot and they have wearied you, how will you compete with the horses? Wait a minute, God. Jeremiah uh, didn't ask you about footmen. Jeremiah didn't ask you anything about horses. He asked you why and how long regarding their suffering. Three things that God responds uh, with and shares with us this morning. Number one, don't lose focus. He says, Jeremiah, you're focusing on the wrong thing. People of God, we are focusing on the wrong thing. We need to stop focusing on the problem and focus on the problem solver. We need to stop focusing on the wicked and those that deal treacherously and focus on the one in whom we live and move and have our being. We need to stop focusing on what is happening around us and focus on the one who is in control of everything. We need to stop focusing on the nation because we can't look to the nation if we've been set above the nation in order that we might be an example to the nation. We need to stop focusing on what we see and focus so that we can look through the eyes of faith. The Hebrew writer says it this way, we ought to be looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, the beginner and ender of our faith, the one who is and was and shall forever be. Him writer wrote, have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you any mountain you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in things thought impossible, and he will do what no other power but holy power can do. We need to take our focus off of man, take our focus off the things around us, take our focus off our situation, our circumstance, our problem, or whatever it is, and keep our focus on the God of our salvation. Don't lose focus. But then we need to deepen our faith. Because if we can't run with the animals that have two feet, how are we going to manage with the animals that have four? In other words, it's going to require us to deepen our faith to deal with what is and even more to deal with what shall be. And the way that we deepen our faith is by getting into the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We may get a little tired along this journey, but the Bible says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We may get a little scared along the way, but the Bible says the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We may get a little weary while trying to make it through, but the Bible says don't be weary in your well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. We may even have to cry sometimes, but the Bible says that weeping endures for the night. Joy is coming in the morning. Oh, my sisters and brothers, we need to revamp. We need to deepen up our faith, because all things are working together 
for our good. And the Bible says that God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all we ask or even think, we need the faith that can conquer anything. Don't lose focus. Deepen our faith, and that will allow us to run our race. We haven't come this far to give up now. We haven't endured as much as we have to throw in the towel. We haven't made it to this point to say, I quit. The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to them that endure until the very end. We've got to run our race. The Bible says he gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We've got to run our race so that we can see what the end is going to be. We've got to run the race that is set before us and press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We've got to run our race. And here is some good news. We don't have to wait until the battle is over. We can shout right now because the battle has already been won. How do you know it's already been won? Because on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame, and Jesus died on that cross. But early on the third day morning, he got up in victory with all power in his hand. And when he got up, he gave us the power to run our race. My sisters and brothers, I don't know how much longer things will be the way that they are. I don't know why and how long we'll have to endure as much as we have to endure. But what I do know is that since God brought us to it, God is able to bring us through it. And even though we may not know how long the night is, we do know that morning is coming. So we just need to keep on pressing, keep on working, keep on pushing, keep on praying, keep on striving, keep on enduring, keep on hoping, keep on loving, and keep on running, because there will be glory after this. And when it's all over, I shall, you shall we shall sing and shout the victory. Oh, my brothers and sisters, thank God that uh, we don't have to uh, lose heart um, as long as we don't lose focus, as long um, as, as we um, the deep in our faith and as long as we run our race. God, we're grateful, and we thank you for this day. We thank you for how you have blessed us, God, and even amid technical difficulties, you're still good and you're still God. And so, God, we thank you even now for this opportunity to come to you in prayer. We, we come before you, God, as empty vessels before a full pitcher, asking you, Lord, please fill us until we're full um, and complete in you. <clears throat> God, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you continue to do. Thank you for how you continue to make ways out of no ways. Thank you for how you continue to turn things around for us. Thank you for how you continue to encourage us along this journey, uh, not to lose heart, not to lose focus. Uh, Thank you, God, for the ability to deepen our faith through and in your word. Thank you, God, for the race that you set before each and every one of us that you desire for us to run. And, God, we thank you that in addition to just uh, the race you've given us, you've also allowed the Holy Spirit to help to lead, to guide, to direct us 
along this journey. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for how you continue to bless us. Thank you for how you continue to love us. Thank you for how you continue to forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray even now for each and every person under the sound of my voice, God. Touch them now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. God, you know whatever they stand in the need of, God. You know what they're going through. You know what they're dealing with, God. You created them, God. You sustain them, God. You take care of them, God. And, God, I pray that you'll just reassure their hearts to let them know that you promised never to leave us, never to leave us alone. And even in those midnight moments, even in those times when they feel like they might be by themselves, even when they're going through something and nobody else may know or nobody else is able to do anything about it, remind them, God, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or even think. So, God, we say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come together, to share one with another in prayer. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to be able to touch and agree with each other on the matters that are of the heart. God, thank you for how you continue to do what you do, and that is be God and God all by yourself. God, as we progress in this day, as we move forward in this day, God, I pray your richest blessings upon your people. I pray, pray, God, for your protection around your people. I pray, God, for the encouragement of your people. God, I pray that you will lift them up, God, and plant their feet on a solid foundation, God. I pray that you will continue to let them know, God, that you have not brought us this far just to leave us now. And, God, as we uh, deal with everything around us in the world, as we deal with wars and rumors of wars, as we deal with pestilence and disease and the different things that your scripture tells us we would encounter, God, I pray that you will remind us that these things uh, have to come. These things must come um, in order for your word to extend to the uttermost parts of the world. God, and we thank you for what you're in the midst of doing. And even when we don't understand it, God, we'll still trust you. Even when we can't feel like we can't trace you, we'll still trust you. Even, God, when we feel like we don't know what is going on and what you're up to, we'll trust you with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding. We'll acknowledge you uh, so that you can direct our path. So thank you, God for what you're in the midst of doing. Thank you, God, how you're healing hearts, you're healing bodies, you're healing families, God. You're putting things back together again. God, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord, we will give you glory. We will give you honor. We'll lift you up and magnify you, for you alone are worthy to be praised. Thank you is our prayer. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart in agreement with this prayer say, Amen. 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 Amen.